हे गाइस वेलकम टू डेटा ट्रैक योर वन स्टॉप चैनल फॉर ऑल द डेटा साइंस एंड मशीन लर्निंग अपडेट्स इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल बी डूइंग ए एम एल सिस्टम डिजाइन बेसिकली वी विल बी टेकिंग ए बिजनेस प्रॉब्लम एंड कन्वर्टिंग इट इन टू ए एम एल सिस्टम डिजाइन प्रॉब्लम वेन यू वर्क फॉर अ इंडस्ट्री यू नीड टू कन्वर्ट अ बिजनेस प्रॉब्लम इन टू एम एल डिजाइन प्रॉब्लम एंड देन सॉल्व इट विथ ऑल द स्टेप्स इन प्लेस लाइक वट इज द बिजनेस मैट्रिक वट्स द नॉर्थ स्टार एंड वट विल बी योर एम एल आर्किटेक्चर डाइग्राम एंड वट विल बी योर एम एल मॉडल्स एंड हाउ यू विल चेक द करेक्टनेस ऑफ एम एल मॉडल्स ऑल दोज थिंग्स वी विल डिस्कस एंड एज वेल एज दिस विल बी सुपर हेल्पफुल फॉर यू इन इंटरव्यूज वैन यू गो फॉर ए एम एल डिजाइन राउंड सो विद दैट लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल बी डिजाइनिंग ए फ्रॉड डिटेक्शन सिस्टम फॉर एन ई कॉमर्स टाइप वेबसाइट लेट्स ए एमेजॉन सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड द प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इज टू डेवलप ए फ्रॉड डिटेक्शन सिस्टम टू आइडेंटिफाई फ्रॉड ऑन एन ई कॉमर्स प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक एमेजॉन सो हाउ यू विल टेक इट इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू विल थिंक ऑफ ऑल द फ्रॉड्स विच आर देयर इन द प्लेटफॉर्म इफ यू आर वर्किंग फॉर ए कंपनी यू कैन डिस्कस इट विद बिजनेस प्रोडक्ट एंड विद इन योर टीम एंड इफ इट्स ए एम एल सिस्टम डिजाइन प्रॉब्लम यू कैन कम अप विद डिफरेंट फ्रॉड्स एंड डिस्कस द सीनेरियोज विद योर इंटरव्यूअर्स सो वेन यू डिस्कस इट एंड वेन यू थिंक अबाउट इट दीज आर द टाइप ऑफ फ्रॉड्स दैट कैन कम अप वन इज द फर्स्ट वन इज बायर साइड फ्रॉड्स विच हैपन्स फ्रॉम द कंज्यूमर साइड द वट द बायर कैन डू दे कैन डू रिटर्न फ्रॉड बायर परचेजेज आइटम्स एंड रिटर्न दैम विद डिफरेंट और डैमेज आइटम्स इन साइड द पैकेज विच इज अ रिटर्न फ्रॉड इन रिफंड फ्रॉड वट हाउ इज इट डिफरेंट फ्रॉम रिटर्न फ्रॉड इज इन रिफंड फ्रॉड द बायर मे क्लेम दैट आइटम वॉज नॉट रिसीव्ड और वॉज डैमेज टू ऑप्टेन ए रिफंड while keeping the item so in return frauds they were returning it with a damage or different items in refund fraud they take the refund but they don't uh, give back the items and they uh, end up keeping the item there can also be seller side frauds the first one being counterfeit goods where a seller can uh, sell fake copies of genuine branded items counterfeit goods are the ones uh, that are created to imitate the genuine items or uh, with an intent to deceive the customer and uh, the customer can buy it thinking those are authentic but in reality those are fake and this can include fake designer clothing and other blended products it's a type of fraud from seller side other is bad quality products seller is trying to sell products of inferior quality not as described or not suitable for use which can negatively impact both the platform's image as well as customer satisfaction the other type of fraud that seller can do is review manipulation where they can post fake positive reviews about their own product or they can do negative reviews for the competitor's product again there can be fake listings some new sellers can come as fake sellers they can create fake product listing to scam customer into paying for non existential products so these are the buyer side and seller side frauds there can also be attack related frauds for example account takeover a hacker can hack into someone's uh, amazon account and get an unauthorized access of legitimate buyer's account to make fraudulent purchases what they can do they can use uh, the uh, they can, they can use hacking techniques to hack into uh, genuine customer's account and use their wallet balance use their saved credit cards and so on to make fraudulent purchases there can also be bot attacks in bot attacks uh, what uh, these bots do is there there are automated scripts but they try to exploit vulnerabilities in the platform slow down the system with a large number of clicks request uh, to crawl data causing various issues such as systems performance degradation data breaches and so on and overall negative user experience so with this bot attacks they can try to uh, make the overall platform down with too many requests and also there can be data breaches and so on so there can also be logistic sites frauds that is once the item is out for delivery there can be logistic sites fraud for example delivery agent fraud what delivery agent can do is they can manipulate the shipping details to make it appear that the item was delivered when it was actually not not and creating fake shipping labels falsely claiming that delivery was attempted but actually not doing the delivery attempt or actually delivering also there can be theft of product from package let's say the package has three items they can uh, uh, they can have one uh, item out of the package uh, and so on so there can be theft of products from the packages so these are the type of frauds that can be there in the uh, e-commerce type platform like amazon one is buyer side fraud other is seller side fraud there can be attack related frauds and also there can be logistic side frauds once you have discussed this with interviewer or in your company let's say uh, 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 the final consensus is that we will uh, prioritize the return fraud and counterfeit goods at first and we want to develop solutions ml system 
around return frauds and counterfeit goods so uh, that has been decided so uh, in this video we will do the system design of returns fraud and in the next video we will do for counterfeit goods next comes the important approach that how to convert that business problem into an ml system design and what should be the high level steps these are the high level steps which will follow for most of the uh, business problems first is we will understand what the problem statement is secondly we will understand what the business goal or action item is because once we know the business goal then only we can create a ml system around it third is what will be the north star metric what is the scale of the problem like the system that you are designing the ml system what type of scale it should be able to handle and once you know the north star scale of the problem what business wants to do with the problem statement like how they want to solve it you can design a high level architecture of your ml uh, system and then uh, you can also design ml models which are, can be part of your ml system like the ml system is a overall high level architecture it can have different modules there can be different models uh, each model you can design under it that these are my models within model to train a model you need to know what are the features and what are the entities so we will understand what entities are necessary for that ml model which you are designing and what will be the entity features which which model will you choose there are tons of uh, ml models available right like logistic regression xgboost random forest neural networks svm and so on so which ml model will you use and how you will judge the ml models performance what are the ml metrics you will consider and finally once you see good results in your offline data how you will take it to online experimentation and if the experimentation is successful you can scale this system so with that let's design the return fraud system following these steps so let's first understand the problem statement the problem statement is buyer purchases item and return them with different or damaged item inside the package and business wants to reduce this returns fraud and how they want to tackle this is for non-returnable categories they will directly reject the return claims and for returnable categories they want to uh, bifurcate the users they want to divide the users into categories depending on the risk of uh, returns fraud they have classified user into very high risk high risk and medium risk in uh, terms of returns fraud for very high risk buyers they want to make the returns ineligible and reflect this information during the purchase process itself so in the ui itself while they are purchasing or browsing they won't see the replacement or return option um, for the products and for high to medium risk buyers for high to medium risk buyers what they want to do is they want to alert uh, the pickup agent to be extra careful while performing the return item checks so for very high risk buyers they want to make the returns ineligible and reflect this information during the purchase process itself and for high to medium risk buyers they want to make this risk flag or this uh, uh, de degree of risk information available to pickup agent so the pickup agent is extra careful while performing the return item checks next we will look at the north star and check matrix to solve this problem we already know the problem statement we know how business wants to solve it next is we can discuss with the interviewer or if it's a real project we can discuss with business and product what uh, the right north star and check matrix for the project so the right north star for this uh, returns fraud is reduction in the fraudulent returns that is we want to reduce the fraudulent returns and keeping uh, return rate for genuine returns in check so basically the return rate for genuine returns to remain constant it should not happen that uh, we are uh, flagging the returns and in this process some of the genuine returns are also getting affected so the genuine return claims should remain constant at least not reduce and also customer churn rate should not reduce because of this when we are disallowing customer from doing the returns it should not happen that some a good customer has to face challenges because of this and as a result customer churn out so customer churn rate also should be checked it should remain constant it should not increase so these are the north star metric which is reduction in fraudulent returns and check metrics genuine returns should remain constant and also customer churn rate should remain constant and uh, is it a personalization problem yes it's a personalized risk score because the risk score module will generate risk score at real time for each buyer and product it can happen for a product one buyer is risky other buyer is not risky in terms of returns fraud so it's a personalized risk score being generated for each buyer and product indicating whether the return of a particular product is risky for a particular buyer or not after uh, checking and confirming the north star and check matrix we'll understand the scale of the problem so we know that for certain buyers 
who are very high risk buyers returns are made ineligible and this information to be displayed during the purchase process itself in the ui the risk score module must generate a real time risk score for every buyer cross product so it has to generate for all the combination of buyer and product indicating indicating on the ui whether the product is eligible for returns before the purchase during the browsing process itself so basically this information has to be updated in real time in the website during the browsing time itself so it's a it has to be real time and also it has to be real time because uh, because let's say the dow which is daily active users is 100 million which is 10 crore users and let's say there are 60 million products in the uh, ecosystem in the platform then you can't generate risk score for all 100 million cross 60 million uh, possibilities so how this is reduced is by moving things to real time so offline generating for all combinations is not possible at all so we move to a real time system where as soon as the user come we uh, generate their feed in that feed only we also uh, generate the risk score and take action depending on that so it's a real time uh, ML system that we are designing where let's assume that DAO to be 100 million and user fetches the feed two times in a day. Let's say on an average user comes two times in a day uh, to the platform. So and per feed we fetch 100 products to be shown whether it's the search page or it's the home page at a time 100 products are shown to the user. So 100 million users on an average they come two times and uh, at once we show a feed of 100 products. So uh, for these 100 products, we will also have to generate the uh, risk score, which is return risk score through the return risk score module. So how many inferences we have to do 100 million into two because two uh, times the user comes to the platform on average and at once we fetch a feed of 100 products. So 220 billion inferences we have to do uh, every day. Now to meet this uh, high load we need a throughput of around 1500 requests per second and a latency of around 200 milliseconds so what is throughput throughput means we should be able to handle 1500 requests or 1500 buyers coming to the platform per second which de demonstrate high capacity of handling concurrent requests we should be able to handle concurrent request of 1500 uh, per second and latency means how much time it takes for one request to complete so for one request to complete, it should not take more than 200 milliseconds because otherwise the app will be slow. User comes and still everything is loading. So latency should be under 200 milliseconds and throughput should be 1500 RPS. You can understand with this diagram as well. Throughput is the uh, width of the pipe, which is how many requests we are supporting. And latency is the length of the pipe that how much time it takes for uh, things to load. So latency should be within 200 milliseconds and throughput within 1500 RPS and we, I will show to you with this latency and throughput we will be able to meet the load of 20 billion inferences per day. So here is a just a rough calculation 1500 requests per second and in a day we have 24 hours 60 minutes 60 second if you multiply you will be doing 26 billion requests per day which is way uh, more than 20 billion. So with uh, a throughput of 1500 and 200 you will be able to meet the load of 20 billion inferences per day and once you know that uh, this is the latency and throughput you can you can have your risk score module exposed as an api on on demand or fixed config of nodes let's say you need 10 nodes to support this latency and throughput so you can have those uh, uh, nodes configured in an on demand or fixed config mode apt to handle the above throughput and latency so we know the throughput of 1500 rps is enough and a latency of 200 milliseconds is good enough and we will do the load testing to find out how many nodes are needed we will have them as needed to handle this throughput and latency so the scale of the problem is clear that these many inferences will be doing per second and it will be a real time system it will be a personalized risk score model which will be generating risk score on the fly as soon as the user comes to the platform next we'll understand the architecture of the uh, problem we can design the architecture so architecture is something of this sort where the user comes to the platform and we uh, fetch the feed of 100 products now we will check the categories because if it's a non-returnable category we don't need to generate the risk score right and for other items which are returnable category we can generate the risk score for this user through the risk score uh, module and uh, now if the user is very high risk for returnable categories then we can have that option in ui that returns and replacement are not eligible and for other users it will be eligible but the pickup agent will be notified so if it's a non-returnable category the item will directly go to the user field and if it's a returnable category then depending on the 
risk score the changes in ui will be done so that that option is whether available to the user or not and also this option will be there uh, reflected once the order is placed that you are not eligible for return if he is a if the user is a very high risk buyer and for medium to uh, low risk buyers uh, the intensity of risk will be notified to the pickup agent if the pickup agent needs to be extra careful or not now let's say the return request is placed agent will make a inform call whether to uh, take approve this return request or not he will do the checks and also he will do an informed call based on risk score if the risk score is very high uh, then he needs to let's say do 10 checks while if the risk score is not very high uh, it can be easy return just two three checks depending on the risk score the pickup agent will be shown the right option and how many checks to do and let's say if the return is rejected uh, because it was a fraudulent return then uh, return won't be allowed and if the pickup agent accepts the return then uh, then everything is fine and item reaches the warehouse in warehouse also there will be one more level of check let's say return agent missed something which uh, was uh, which was identified in the warehouse letter so here also the one more check will be done whether the item is actually a genuine return or was it a fraud return and finally all this data whether he uh, the return agent directly rejected or whether it rejected through a warehouse check or whether it was a genuine return will all flow back to the risk score module for retraining and fine tuning so this is the overall architecture where users comes to the platform category is checked for all the items risk score is generated depending on the intensity of risk uh, the ui changes in the feeds are done and once the return request is placed uh, agent makes an inform call depending on the risk score uh, depending on the risk score there can be more checks or lesser checks to be performed and uh, uh, once the item re, uh, re, uh, returns to the warehouse then again one more check is done and all these uh, uh, labels wh whether it was a genuine return or not a genuine return flows back to the ml module for retraining and fine tuning now to understand this risk score module uh, we need to have the labels right to, to even make this ml model we need to have the right labels of ones and zeros that what is a return fraud and what is not a return fraud so how to generate the risk score uh, labels so uh, return fraud levels 1 and 0 for training are generated as follows return rejected by the return agent directly re rejected by the return agent will be labeled as one that yes that was a return fraud and if return was accepted but in warehouse later it was found to be not genuine then again it will be labeled as one that yes it's a return fraud and genuine returns uh, which the warehouse uh, achieves will be labeled as zero it can happen that there are very few uh, return frauds and most of others are genuine so we can do those uh, sampling balances while the ml model training next is uh, we know we have the training data available that at least the labels available that which, what is return fraud and what is not how to generate features what features to generate for this return risk score module let's look in this slide where we will discuss about the entity and entity features uh, for the ml model to build an effective machine learning model for detecting return fraud it's essential to identify what are the relevant entities and their entity features so what are the relevant entities here one is customer definitely some customer who do lot of return fraud will automatically be at higher risk so customer is a important entity order is also important entity because you can look at uh, the order value the order categories and so on product is another important uh, uh, entity because let's say some product has lot of returns because not because it's a uh, return fraud but the product itself is of inferior quality then the risk of return fraud will reduce because we know the product is not that good and also vice versa let's say product is good and again return is coming then there can be a chance of return fraud so product is another entity entity other is seller let's say we know the seller who how uh, genuine the seller is what are seller ratings and so on so seller is another entity product category some categories may be more susceptible to return fraud let's say uh, electronic items and so on right so depending on product category also we can take a call and other is context let's say during the sales like black friday or some big sales uh, we know that lot of return fraud happens so uh, context can be another thing and also context can include the time factor that what is the time between order uh, delivery and return request placed if it's very less then there can be high chances of return fraud and also there can be cross features you, we can't generate features for customer cross product because there will be uh, let's say uh, 
500 million total customers in the platform and 60 million products all come generating all the combinations of customer cross product as a feature is not possible at all but we can have some smart features like customer cross product categories because categories will be let's say 20 or 30 categories so for each customer we can have some features around product category that for this customer what has been the return across these categories of electronics apparels and so on so we can have some cross features as well so these are the entities customer order product seller product category context and product category cross customer kind of cross features as well now let's understand in details what could be the entity features under each entity for customer uh, entities the features can be like customer id uh, normally instead of using unique identifier for customer we use the embeddings and embeddings work really well with neural network kind of model so we can have uh, customer embedding something like that we can also have customer account age how long the customer has been with the platform customer purchase history total number of purchases made by the customer customer return history total number of returns made by the customer customer return rate percentage of uh, purchased item returned by the customer, customer complaints, number of complaints filed by the customer, customer rating, average rating given by customer on products, return frequency, number of returns within a specific time period, time since last return, duration since the last returns made by the customer, average return value, average value of the returns made by the customer. We can have features around order entities as well, order value, total value of the order, order quantity, number of items in the order, order payment mode, some payments may be more risky, right? Let's say, uh, let's say uh, credit card or PayPal or some uh, some flag credit cards are more riskier and so on. So matter of use for payment, order shipping address, location where the order was shipped, order delivery time, time taken for the order to be delivered. We can have entity features around product as well. So product ID, which can again go as an embedding, product category, category of the product, electronics, clothing, etc. Product brand, brand of the product, product price percentile. That is price of the product divided by average category price, product rating, average rating of the product, product return rate, per percentage of returns for this product. If the return rate was already high, then it may not be a fraudulent return, it can be a genuine return. But if uh, return rate is low, again, if a high risk customer is, uh, let's say, placing a return request, it can be a return fraud, right? So product return rate, product reviews, where textual reviews of the product, it can again go as a text and embedding sentiment uh, features and so on. For seller entity, there can be seller ID which can go as an embedding, seller tenure, how long the seller has been with the platform, seller rating, average rating of the seller, seller return rate, percentage of returns of the seller's product, seller complaint history, number of complaints against the seller, seller fraud history, any previous instances of fraudulent activity by the seller. Uh, there can also be features around product category as we know some categories may be more susceptible to return fraud so product return rate by category percentage of return rate for a specific product category percentage uh, product return fraud return rate by category percentage of fraudulent returns for a specific product category right we can see how many fraudulent returns have come for this category there can also be contextual features like time of purchase time of the day day of the week month season special sales because purchases made during sales event or holidays may have more return fraud time of return request so time of the day day of the week month season when return request was made example high returns may occur shortly after a major sale events order to, to return time duration between the delivery of the product and return request example return request immediately after delivery might be suspicious and there can also be cross features as i was telling customer cross product category like customer product return rate by category percentage of returns for a specific category by a customer and we can generate it for all the customer and use it as a feature so all these features will go to the model to predict the uh, label which we have already seen how we have generated in the last slide that is uh, from the actual data we would have generated the labels and these features will try to explain the target variable uh, with the right ML model technique and what are the different ML model techniques that can be used we can use logistic regression for a baseline model uh, uh, then we can use random forest and gradient boosting machines like XGBoost or like GPM random forest and gradient boosting machines are tree based model and they are more effective due to the complex interaction between features and their ability to handle non-linear data and their higher accuracy and uh, once we have reached state of art performance with this model then we can also try out neural networks and with neural networks the uh, goodness comes from if the data is huge 
and secondly neural networks can use this kind of embedding features as i was talking about and also neural network can take use of sequential features let's say you have features like last three clicks last three orders last three return request and so on neural networks can take uh, can make use of these sequential patterns very wisely so finally you can also try neural network and how good each of these models are performing you can check with evaluation metrics like precision recall f1 score and auc roc uh, of the model so basically the model which has higher auc roc performs well and also you can do some kind of offline testing to evaluate uh, your model and once you are clear that which model is the winner after doing all sorts of hyper parameter testing you can pick the two three best variants and do a online experimentation so overall the process of building a model looks like this where you do data collection data pre-processing feature engineering we have already seen the features uh, then you do model training and then you evaluate on the evaluation metrics and then you deploy in the production environment uh, and if the results are good in your experimentation you scale the model and you continuously monitor uh, the model for accuracy this is which is called observability that with time there is no drift to ensure model adapts to changing condition and continues to perform effectively so is there a need of retraining is there any drift in the features is there any drift in the target variable if there is any drift in the customer behavior you continuously observe your model so uh, the final step once you have your model ready you can do the online experimentation with your existing methodology if there was some previous methodology versus the current methodology how much uh, the returns fraud had reduced and how much the check metrics are in place they are on check uh, and so on if the and if your uh, treatment is doing better you can scale it to all the users and make it a platform feature and to do an online experimentation some uh, concepts that you need to know is null hypothesis alternate hypothesis significance level p value type 1 error type 2 error and statistical significance you can read about it i will just uh, briefly cover null hypothesis basically means that there is no effect due to your treatment alternative hypothesis means that, is, that there is an effect because of the treatment that is your new variant or new methodology significance level has to be crossed for uh, a variant to win like we can only say that this variant is performing well with statistical significance depending on the uh, alpha we have set next is p value p value uh, should be lesser than the significance level a p value lesser than chosen significance level indicates there is statistical significance that is the gains that we have got due to the new methodology is more significant uh, then the significance level and you can confidently say that yes this effect is due to your treatment or your new methodology and not just by chance also there are type 1 type 2 error and statistical significance to be reached so once you have done the experimentation if your methodology is performing well you can scale it to across users so uh, with that we come to the end of uh, this uh, ml design video where we took the problem business problem statement of reducing the returns fraud and we uh, used this approach where we clearly understood what the problem statement is what the business goal or how business wants to tackle it what should be the north star and check matrix what is the scale of the problem before designing the system and what is the high level architecture of the approach and what are the ml models we design what are the features what is the model of choice how we uh, which ml metrics we use to compare between models and finally we did an online experimentation to uh, verify how good our treatment is and then we scaled it across users so hope you like the video in the next one we will cover counterfeit goods fraud and please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye